Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Stephanie, and I'm Joe. We're on day two of our TLC unit. We're talking about two chefs, Dan Churchill and Hayden Quinn, and their show called "Surfing the Menu: Next Generation." You can surf a lot of things just by taking a look quickly at things. You know, surf a neighborhood, surf the menu. What do you surf? Surf the internet. You, oh, of course. Definitely. That's、uh, I guess one of the more more most, obvious ones. Most popular. Yeah. People surf the internet all the time. Take a look、time. here and there. You don't land anywhere for too long. But these two are really cooking up some delicious sounding food. I can't taste it, so I can't tell you if it's really delicious. But it sure sounds good to me. They're in Australia, which has a lot of different kinds of scenery, and they're taking us to some of the most beautiful spots, I guess, in that country. I've never been to Australia, but I hope to go someday before I move back to the states. We're fairly close to Australia from here, Joe. You know, this is when we should be going to see Australia. Yeah, we're in the neighborhood. We're more in the neighborhood <laughs> now、right. than、yeah. we are if we're back in、uh, North America. Wow,、well, you'd still, have a long flight. It'd be a very, very long、Woo. flight. It's based. Basically, as far away from my hometown as you can possibly get, but it's not too far from here. And who knows, you guys? Maybe after、uh, listening to today's program, you might have more reasons than yeah, before yeah. even to go down to Australia, check out some of the nice surf spots that our chefs are taking、yeah. us to, and of course, checking out some of this food as well. Yesterday, we were checking out Noosa. Today we're going to、mm. check out another uh, small town uh, that's known for some good ingredients and some、uh, different kinds of food as well. Let's go ahead and read through the article. Then Stephanie and I will return. Next, Dan and Hayden are off to Wuurimal, Australia. Wuurimal is home to the Wuurimal Cattle Station. A working outback cattle, sheep, and goat ranch. They don't have much time to relax on this part of their Australian tour, however, as they're put to work on the station straight away. Dan and Hayden join Justin, the station's owner and his crew, who are using planes, motorbikes, and jeeps to herd the cattle into their pens. Once they're finished, Dan and Hayden are exhausted and hungry. They've got the perfect culinary remedy for that, though. Dan's skirt steak with chimichurri. As Dan cooks the steak over a charcoal fire, Hayden prepares the chimichurri, a flavorful sauce made of herbs, garlic, and oil. The perfect end to a long day is the mouth-watering steak paired with a tasty avocado salsa that Dan and Hayden heartily chow down. Dan and Hayden go on to visit Byron Bay, one of Australia's surfing meccas. After catching some waves, they meet Richard, a chocolatier, who agrees to show them how to make delicious chocolate truffles. Later, with a morning of chocolate making under their belts, Dan and Hayden head west to Nimbin in quest of the best goat cheese Australia has to offer. They find what they're looking for at Nimbin Valley Dairy. Where they're able to view the entire process of goat cheese production all in one place, starting with the goats and ending with a refrigerator. Armed with their chocolate and natural goat cheese, they're ready to prepare Dan's chocolate goat cheese tart. To find out how they put together this stunning, nutritious dessert, and to see more marvelous adventures and recipes, check out TLC's Surfing the Menu Next Generation this October. All right, that was day two, all about the epic Australian food odyssey. We've come to another town.、Uh, this one I had not heard of, just like yesterday's town of Noosa. This is Wuurimal. Wuurimal, I believe that's how they pronounce it. I hope I'm saying that. <laughs> that's right. hard to say. It's hard to say. Some of these、uh, Australian towns they have、uh, kind of different names that are long and hard to say.、Mm -hmm. This says next, Dan and Hayden are off to Wuurimal, Australia. Wuurimal is home to the Wuurimal Cattle Station,、mm. a working outback cattle, sheep, and goat ranch. Now, in the outback, which is basically the very large, huge center、mm. of the continent of Australia. Remember, Australia is not only a country; it's also a continent. It's huge. It can be easy to forget that. Uh, I had friends one time who were、yeah. visiting Australia, and they were asking, "Well, how long will it take us to quote unquote do the island?" 
as if they're going to somewhere very small where they can just, <laughs> you know, travel around the coast and do a drive. But it takes days、yeah. to travel across the country. It's very vast,、yeah. and the outback is vast as well. And you have these huge farms out there where you can't just cover it by walking around or even driving around. Sometimes they actually need. Airplane, plane, yeah, to get from one side to the other.、True. Otherwise, it would be day's journey across、mm-hmm. it. And there's also sometimes not a lot of water or resources out there too. So、no. this is in the outback, the center、mm-hmm. of Australia. They have cattle there. Cattle here will probably mean cows. It's a cow farm.、Uh-huh. They also have sheep, and they have goats too. And we call this a ranch. A ranch is a farm where you don't just have crops; you'll also have livestock as well. So you might have cattle, sheep. Or goats, if you chickens, have chickens, chickens, chicken ranch,、yeah. anything. If you have <laughs> animals on the farm, you can also refer to it as a ranch. So this is a very big ranch out in the Aussie outback. Now they don't have much time to relax on this part of their tour. Because they're put to work on the station straight away. Straight away means immediately. Right away. So once they get there, they have to start working, and it's being called a station. Where they're working, and they're joining Justin. He's the station's owner and his crew. Your crew is a group of people who are helping you do something. We often refer to a crew on a ship that's helping the captain, or there's a crew aboard an airplane that includes the pilot and the flight attendants, people like that. So he's got a crew, and instead of using horses, we usually see horses who、um, are trying to herd the cattle. Into a particular area of the ranch. Here, they're actually using vehicles like planes, motorbikes, and jeeps. I would think a motorcycle would actually scare some of the cows. Maybe I'm wrong because they make that loud noise. They might scare them a little bit, but I guess that's how they have to keep the animals in a group. So they have to go around the outside yeah, yeah. and keep them all together. That's what the planes. That's where they would come in、mm. as well. You need the plane up overhead to spot any. Animals that might wander off、yeah. by themselves—they're not supposed to escape from the group. No,、yeah. and we're dealing with a very large area of land and probably thousands and thousands of animals. And as we talk—we、well. ta- talk about cattle as as being a head of cattle,、mm-hmm. like one. One cow, one steer that is、uh, slaughtered for meat is a head of cattle. So they try to keep all of those animals together, and then herd them, or direct, or guide them into what we call pens. It's an area of land that's usually surrounded by a fence. That's right. That's the place where they will keep the animals.、Yeah. They'll have to let them out of their pens to feed,、uh, so they can eat, so they can get nice and big and fat and healthy. Yeah. So they'll have a lot of meat on their bones. But、yeah. then later on, they have to go into their pens so they can easily keep track of them.、Mm. So it's very, very、uh, hungry and tiring work.、Uh, I only ever had to do this once when I was a kid to try、oh, really? and、uh, herd. Get the get the herd into their pens, but it was just a few cows, and even that was tiring. We just、uh, we just had to put some food on the back of a truck, and then the cows <laughs> followed us with the food truck. Wherever wherever you went, they Where, would go. Wherever we went, they would follow. So that was pretty easy. Wow, was nothing like this. Yeah, that sounds exciting. That's something I've never done. Notice here, they're using the word exhausted. They're not just saying tired. Exhausted is a more extreme degree of being tired. You almost can't move. You're so tired. I'm exhausted, and they're also hungry, of course, after doing all that hard work. So they've got the perfect culinary remedy for that, though. And then they name Dan's dish here, which is called Dan's skirt steak with chimichurri. Culinary refers to dishes that you make, especially cuisine. Fancy food, I call it. When I don't call anything I do like、um, culinary dish, I don't, but anything that requires training and、uh, you know some fancy cooking or someone who's trained like a chef, it's culinary. A remedy is some sort of treatment for something that has been hurt. Or perhaps、uh, you've been in an accident, or maybe you just have a cold. Famous home remedies for colds would be drinking apple cider vinegar, 
or maybe standing in the shower to help loosen up all that tan, which we call phlegm.、Uh, those are remedies. Well, what helps them? This culinary remedy. What's going to help them、uh, fill their tummies so they're not hungry anymore? Is Dan's yummy sounding dish. Yes, his skirt steak with chimichurri. So let's learn about how they're going to prepare、yes. that dish now. It says as Dan cooks the steak over a charcoal fire, Hayden prepares the chimichurri, a flavorful sauce made of herbs, garlic, and oil. I'm glad they explained what chimichurri is because <laughs> I had no idea. I'm not a very culinary person. I did not go to culinary school. I once ruined instant noodles, and if you don't believe me, ask、oh, my、bad. wife. So I'm I'm bad at this kind of stuff, <laughs> but these guys are very skilled.、Yes. We have Dan. He's going to make a charcoal charcoal fire, I should say.、Mm -hmm. Charcoal is just wood that has already been、uh, burnt. It come it's down to.、Uh, Basically,、uh, black wood that has been burnt yeah, and fired,、yeah. and it keeps its heat, and it has a very particular scent to it that is pleasing for cooking. That's lovely. Hayden also prepares this chimichurri, and it is a flavorful sauce made of herbs, garlic, and oil. Flavorful just means full of flavor. It、mm -hmm. has very strong flavors, very pleasing flavors. It's a sauce, so it's something that is、uh, wet that you will put over the food to give it flavor.、Mm -hmm. It has herbs, and you'll notice here we don't really pronounce the H in herbs; we just kind of say herbs. Unless you're from Great Britain, they say herbs. They do say they say herbs. It drives me nuts. But in the United States, we often just say、uh, herbs, herbs without the H. No H. Almost like it's spelled E R B S. Yeah. We also have garlic. That's、mm -hmm. a very common ingredient in food. It has a very strong flavor as well. A lot、mm -hmm. of people really. Love it. I love do it. too. Love it. And oil. We don't know what kind of oil here, but maybe it's a vegetable it's oil. It's vegetable oil that they will be putting、yeah. in it. And we use oil when we're,、uh, you know, trying to grease pans or something, keep food from sticking when we're cooking it, especially over flames, because、yeah. if it sticks to the pan, then it'll get burnt. So this will stop everything from getting burnt. So it'll just be nice and evenly cooked. Yeah, this、uh, chimichurri sauce was really stylish. I would say the last year in、uh, culinary circles, you could say it comes from South America. It's from Argentina and Uruguay. They also love it. It's just、uh, parsley, garlic, vegetable oil, sometimes or,、uh, oregano and white vinegar. But it's yummy. There's a green version and a red version. So if you see it on the menu, ask for. It, you'll like it. Now, the perfect end to a long day is the mouth-watering steak that is paired with a tasty avocado salsa that Dan and Hayden heartily chow down. Okay, if it's mouth-watering, you know what happens when you smell something tasty? Your mouth starts watering. That water comes into your mouth because your your body thinks it's got to get ready because it's going to get to eat something.、Uh, that's mouth-watering. Just means really smells good. And it's、uh, appetizing, and if you pair it with something, you're putting it or matching it with something that should be pretty tasty. Here they're talking about avocado salsa、uh, that Dan and Hayden are heartily chowing down. If you chow down, it just means you're eating with a lot of enthusiasm. Okay, so it's more slang, I would say, than just formal English. If you are cooking dinner for your friends and you put the food down in front of them, you could say, "Hey, let's chow down." That's right. They're gonna eat because they're hungry. They've been、yeah. working all day on the ranch or、mm. the cattle station, as we're calling it here. All right, that brings us to about the halfway point. So let's take a short break now and listen to our Chinese teacher, and then we'll be back. Hi everyone, my name is Jenny. 今天我们要继续来看这个旅游频道的新节目。这个新节目内容是把冲浪。冒险再加上烹调，好，提到这个节目，他们带着大家到澳洲来，然后在不同的地方寻找他们要的食材，做不同的料理。还上一次我们提到了第一道菜是韩式料理，而今天我们就要看他们接下来要准备的第二道菜。他们带着大家到澳洲这个 Wormel 这个地方。好，我们来看看这到底是什么样的地方呢？这里就提到了。Wormel is home to the Wormel Cattle Station. 这个地方，他说是
is home too. 在英文里面，当然 home 这个字大家都知道，不过放在这样的片语里面，就表示它是什么的所在地，是什么的大本营。所以啊，可见得这里它有牛，哎，它有牧场。那我们来看，他们今天要做的是做牛排。不过我们来看一下，这边提到他们所做的牛排，它是 skirt steak。我们先看到 skirt， 当然你知道这在英文里面不就代表裙摆吗？裙子吗？不过这里我们要了解，其实牛排在英文里面，他们很强调的是你吃的到底是牛的哪一个部位。那所以如果你是 skirt steak， 其实这个部分是比较靠近这个牛的腹部。好，那我们再来看下面呢，还有他提到说，哎，这个牛排啊，他们呢怎么煮？然后呢，他因为旁边还要用这个阿根廷青酱，所以说他整个的料理其实还蛮复杂的。不过我们要看一个字，也就是跟过去分词有关的，因为他提到这个青酱，他是怎么做的呢？他提到 ，it is flavorful。A flavorful sauce, 好，非常充满着各种的风味。然后 sauce 后面写 made of herbs, garlic and oil. 好，我们晓得 made of， 当然这个 made 就是过去分词。而它之所以用过去分词，理由你也知道，因为它当然是因为你可以把它转换成一个形容词子句，比如说 which is made of。好，那这样就很清楚了。用什么制作而成的这样子的风味十足的佐酱？好，那除了这个过去分词之外，我们再往下看，下面还有一个也是一样，因为他提到说，这漫长的一日怎么样做完美的结束？哎，他说这个完美的结束呢，就是要吃一块这个令人垂涎的牛排，然后搭配美味的洛梨沙沙酱。好，我们看到这里。Paired with, 这跟刚刚的 made of 道理也是一样的。你为什么用 paired? P a i r e d. 为什么要用过去分词？当然也是有个被动的含义在里面，也就是你可以转换成 which is paired with. 好，这中文翻成搭配。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the program. We're on day two of the epic Australian、mm. food odyssey. We're following our pair of chefs, Dan and Hayden, across Australia. They've gone from Noosa all the way to Wurramel, Australia, where they're、uh, on a cattle station. It's a very huge ranch out in the outback, and they've been put to work not just as cooks, but they're actually helping bring in all these head of cattle into their pens. Of course, that means they've worked up quite an appetite, and we've just seen another delicious dish that they've whipped up right out there in the open,、uh, under the stars in the outback. It、mm-hmm. was this、uh, skirt steak with chimichurri.、Yeah. Chimichurri, as Stephanie was explaining just before the break, is kind of a trendy food, a trendy sauce that you're seeing on a lot of menus in some of the world's top restaurants、mm-hmm. these days. You were saying in about the last year, it's kind of、yeah. popped up as a trend. It's almost past its popularity.、So、oh, it's on the way down. It's on the way down. Yeah. Food. The food <laughs> people are very finicky that way. Something is hot today, and it's gone tomorrow. It's、yeah. like it's like pop music. It's it true. Changes. It's like fashion. In、you know, like kale. Kale was popular for a while. It's on its way out. Or we'll see、uh, certain superfoods every once in a while.、Yeah. Everybody will say, "Oh, you have to eat this. This will make you Queen, lose、uh, weight." Was it king, king, quinoa? Yes, that is a <laughs> that is a new one right yeah, now. Yeah, kind of a grain. Or is it gone already? It's I can't, gone. I can't keep track of these things. Yeah, it's like fashion for me. It's here today, gone tomorrow. That's what it's like. But chimichurri、yeah. is delicious, and I'm、it、sure this was as well.、Mm-hmm. So where are they going next? Well, it says Dan and. Hayden go on to visit Byron Bay. This place I have heard of. Oh, really? Noosa and Wurramel, not so much, but Byron oh, Bay. Oh, I don't know Byron. I've、mm. heard of it. It's because it's one of Australia's surfing meccas. Oh. If we describe a place as being a mecca, it's very famous for something, and a lot of people will flock there. 
Uh, literally, Mecca is the place that uh, people of the Muslim faith、right. will go. They have, they have, they believe they have to go there at least once in their lifetime if they're a vi- if they're able to do so.、Uh-huh. It's in Saudi Arabia, and it is a holy site、mm-hmm. for them. So, if we describe something as being a Mecca for something else, it means it's almost like a holy site for people who enjoy that activity. So, if you're a surfer. If you're really serious about it, you hear Byron Bay. You say, "Oh yeah, I've always wanted to go there. The waves are great. The beaches are awesome. So it's a mecca for surfing. So I'm sure they're going to get some waves in, but they're also going to do some cooking too. Oh, of course, because they are chefs. So they're going to be、uh, meeting a guy named Richard. He's a chocolatier. Chocolatier. This is a French word, just in case you've never seen it before.、Um, I really didn't know how to say it at first. Chocolatier is also how it's pronounced. Chocolatier. He's someone who's really, really、uh, skilled at cooking chocolate, making chocolate. Chocolate is very difficult to handle. If you've never worked with chocolate before, you don't know because you just think, "Oh, it tastes good, yay!" It's so difficult. It's very, very.、Um, Sensitive, you could say. So he must be pretty good. He agrees to show these men how to make some delicious chocolate truffles. Chocolate truffles are sold here in Taiwan. I see them all the time. They're quite expensive because they're very, very rich. You can probably just eat one of them. I can eat like a half. I of can、them. eat a lot more than that. <laughs> I can eat about a half of one, and then I'm I like, shouldn't、Whoa. eat a lot more than、yeah. that, but I can, and、it's、I sometimes a, do. It's a delicacy. It's expensive, but they're awfully delicious, aren't they? That's、mm. right. They are very, very delicious, <laughs>、uh, and it's hard to stop at one if、Uh-oh. you like rich food. Yes. Well, later, with a morning of chocolate making under their belts, Dan and Hayden head west to Nimbin、mm. in quest of the best goat cheese. Australia has to offer, so they've got something under their belts. If you've got something under your belt, it means you have that experience.、Mm. Uh, you've had it; it's done, and you can now use that experience、uh, to your benefit in the future. So you've got ten years of school under your belt. It means you've gone through ten years of school, and you've learned a lot of stuff along the way. They've got a morning of chocolate making under their belt, so they've had that experience. They've learned from it. Now they're moving on, and they're going west. To another town I've never heard of, Nimbin. I've、yeah. heard of Byron Bay. I was feeling good about my Australian geography. <laughs> Now we're back into no man's land again.、Yeah. They're going to Nimbin in quest of something. If you're in quest of something, it means you're looking for something. You're searching and you're traveling, trying to find something. They are in quest of the best goat cheese. Yum. Goat cheese. Yes, it is. I, I'm a cheese fan. I love goat cheese. Good cheese.、Yeah. Uh, If I have some good cheese, I'm、yeah. a happy man.、Oh. And they're looking for the best goat cheese Australia has to offer. They have a lot of room for a lot of goats in Australia, so I'm <laughs> sure they know a thing or two about making some good goat cheese. <laughs> well, they're going to、uh, find what they're looking for at a place called Nimbin Valley Dairy. They're able to view the entire process of goat cheese production. That's kind of fun when you go to a factory and you see how something's made. Unless it's the hot dog factory. Yes, I was just gonna say, unless it's hot dogs, you don't want to know what they put in hot dogs. No, it's really disgusting, and I love hot dogs, so I'd rather not even look. I don't want to know. Just, just give me the hot dog. Don't tell me. Just how let it's me、made. eat them. I don't want to know anything.、Uh, but they're able to see how the goat cheese starts out. Of course, it starts out as milk. Goats produce milk. My sister has some goats on her farm. They're mean little suckers. They're not nice animals, but、uh, they produce some pretty good tasting milk, and then they turn that into delicious cheese. I love goat cheese. It's a little strong for some people. I only use little bits of it in my salads. I love it in salad. So they see all of this in one place, starting with the goats. And of course, the go- the goat cheese once it's produced ends up in a refrigerator to keep it fresh. So all of this happens at the Nimbin Valley Dairy. Okay, so they've got goat cheese. They've learned how to make chocolate.、Mm-hmm. Where's this all heading to? Well, it says armed with their chocolate and natural goat cheese, they're ready to prepare Dan's chocolate goat cheese tart. So it sounds like they're going to combine these two things. It says they're armed with something. If you're armed with something, it means you have something. But literally, to be armed with something means you have a weapon. It means you might have something like a gun or a or knife, a knife、uh, something you can use to hurt somebody or protect yourself, or to protect yourself as well, to defend yourself.、Mm. 
Here, they're not armed with a weapon, but we will use this phrase sometimes、uh, in kind of a humorous way、yeah. because obviously chocolate and goat cheese. Are not weapons. You would never say, "Hands up!" <laughs> I've got this goat cheese, and I'm not afraid to use it. No, you would never say that. Of no. course. Now it says they're ready to prepare Dan's chocolate goat cheese tart.、So、Yum. That actually sounds pretty good. Sometimes、yeah. you hear about strange combinations of ingredients, and you think, "Ew, that that's not going to be." This、good. sounds delicious. But I think these flavors will、yeah. actually mix quite well. Ooh, I do too. To find out how they put together this stunning, nutritious dessert. And to see more marvelous adventures and recipes, you got to tune into the show, guys. You got to check out TLC Surfing, the menu next generation, and it's going to be on TV this October. We're in October now, so you better be checking out your TV listings to find out when it's on. If something's nutritious, then it's very good for our bodies. It has vitamins and minerals in it. And it's not just something like potato chips, which aren't very nutritious. And goat cheese and chocolate can be very nutritious.、Uh, actually, dark chocolate is quite healthy for you if you don't eat too much of it. It helps you burn fat, which I am very excited to know about. Marvelous just means really awesome, terrific. It's one of those words we use when we really like something a lot, or we think it's really wonderful or cool. So this show has a lot of great things. We hope you'll give it a chance and tune in. You're going to be able to pick up some of these vocabulary words we've been talking about. So that's all good. And we'll get some good、uh, recipe、oh, recommendations、yeah. as well. So be sure to check out the show. We're almost out of time for today. Before we go, let's listen to our Chinese teacher one last time. 好，来，我们继续来看哦。我们要跟两位名厨在澳洲做菜，寻找食材。他们做了到现在为止已经两道美味的料理了。接下来第三道菜，哎，他们带着大家到另一个地方，叫做 Barren Bay。这个 Barren Bay 这里呢，它是一个澳洲冲浪圣地。所以说，它用到 Mecca。Mecca， 我们知道，如果你把 M 大写，那是指卖家，这是回教徒的圣地。但是你小写之后，那就是表示大家同样热衷于某一个啊活动的人，哎，去膜拜的地方。所以它这里是。冲浪圣地。好，来，我们再往下看。那他们到这个地方呢，是要跟一位巧克力制作师傅见面。这个人叫做 Richard。那 Richard 呢，就教他们怎么样制作可口的松露巧克力。好，那我们来看这边说啊，嗯，他们。拜访了这一位巧克力师傅，然后呢，学到了这些技巧。那学到这些技巧，当你要表示你把什么学会了，习得什么啊、呃、知识，成功学会某一样技巧，你可以用这个片语，也就是 under one's belt。尤其前面有时候会加一个动词 have something under your belt 或是 my belt。好，这个就是表示说你把什么技巧学会。那他们学会之后，并不是就开始做菜，因为这只是其中的一环。接下来呢，他们还带着大家到另一个地方，然后呢，要寻找什么？他们想要找到澳洲最棒的山羊乳酪，因为他们这一道料理就叫做巧克力山羊乳酪塔。好，在这个制作过程当中，当然他也有描述的非常清楚。可是有一个跟文法有关的，就是在提到。他们找的地方是在哪里？他说在 n i m b i n Valley Dairy。好，这个地方逗点后面再加一个 where。好，我们晓得 where 它基本上呢就是一个关系副词。当然，你放在逗点后面用关系副词，然后引导出一个子句，就表示说这是非限定用法。那如果你是在一个专有名词的地点后面。然后当然是要用非限定用法的，所以这个逗点是必要的。好，那在这里呢，他们呢就可以看到整个这个山羊乳酪、山羊起司它的制作过程。好，我们今天对于这个单元的介绍跟解释就到这里为止，我们下次见。That's all the time we have for the program today. We hope you've enjoyed going on this epic Australian food odyssey with us over the past couple of days, along with our chefs Dan and Hayden. Do remember to check out the show on TLC Surfing the Menu Next Generation.
It's on TLC right now this month. Until the next edition of English Digest, I'm Joe. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye.、Bye.